So, suppose you walked into a convenience store today and decided to buy a drink for one dollar. We understand, hopefully, that we would likely not pay only a dollar. More likely, we would pay a dollar thirteen. So the big question is, does the convenience store get to keep all of that dollar thirteen? And of course, why or why not? So, accounting students, today we are discussing the topic of sales tax. We're going to be looking at how to um, how they work and how to process the accounting entries for them. Um, in terms of learning goals, as I said, we should be able to explain the nature and purpose of sales taxes and then also be able to um, do the basic accounting entries related to them. By the end of this, you should be able to use appropriate terminology and accurately explain to somebody what a sales tax, uh, what sales taxes are, how they work and why. And you should also be able to properly identify the correct debit and credit accounts and the amounts um, in order to create a for properly formatted journal entry. So sales taxes in general are any government revenue generated from business transactions. Typically when we talk about business transactions in this context, we're talking about purchases and sales. Uh, sometimes you'll see the expression or acronym value at, or VAT or VAT. This is a value added sales tax. And essentially what this means is that it's just being it's called what's called a pass-through tax as different products pass through different stages of production. There are <clears throat> taxes charged at different levels um, or different, in different percentages at each level. So when a parts company buys um, raw materials from their suppliers, they pay the suppliers the taxes. When the finished goods companies buy parts from suppliers, they pay taxes on those parts. When we as the consumer buy a finished good, we pay the tax on the finished good. As I'm sure you can probably appreciate, there are lots of laws and regulations and rates. So depending on what province you're in, what level of production you're in, what kind of good you're in, what kind of market you're in, all of these factors can have different um, related laws and rates uh, applied to them. Some of these taxes are harmonized, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Some are not. Um, so they are obviously very complicated, but also uh, the laws and rates are always changing. In Ontario, we have a harmonized sales tax, which simply means that the collection of sales tax is uh, coordinated um, through the federal government. The HST actually is a combination of provincial tax and federal tax and so harmonize just means that the federal and provincial governments are working together to collect one tax instead of two. Our current rate of 13% is a combination of 8% provincial tax and 5% federal tax. So whenever a vendor buys something they are required by law to collect the applicable taxes at the correct rate. So when you go in to buy that drink for a dollar when you pay the 13% tax the business is required to do that by law and is required to submit that money to the government. So this money really we have to understand does not actually belong to the vendor. It is they are simply providing the role of tax collector. They have to keep track of all those taxes they collect and then submit the gov that money to um, the government at required times, usually quarterly. For this process, we are going to use a new account called HST Payable. Since we collect taxes from our customers, we have to pay that to the government in the future. So it acts just like an account payable, hence the term HST Payable. <clears throat> For example, if we, um, if we are an Acme computer company and we sell a computer for $500 with HST to somebody, there would be the $500 compute for the computer and then $65 in taxes. So the entry therefore would be, and assuming we circle it, do it for cash, we would credit, or sorry, debit our bank account for the full amount of the, of the money that we've collected from our customer. Of that though, we can only claim 500 as our sales, as our revenue. And then the $65, we would then credit like an account payable um, to our HST payable account. At the end of the quarter, 
we would then have to um, submit those collected taxes from the government. So remembering that a payable account normally has a credit balance, we would actually debit the full value of the payable account and would, and then credit the bank because then we would write a check to the government to pay what we owed. On the other hand, when a business um, buys supplies, as we mentioned before, they have to pay taxes to their supplier. So the problem is that this results in um, double and triple and quadruple charging of taxes. So when the um, so if a parts buyer buys um, parts from somebody who's finished the raw goods, they're paying taxes both on the finished parts, but also on the raw goods when um, the part processor, part maker bought the raw goods, their raw supplies from their vendor. And so to reduce these costs, um, the government allows businesses to claim back the HST that they pay to their vendors. So in the same way that we keep track of the taxes we collect from our customers, we also have to keep track of the taxes that we pay to our vendors because we want to be in a position to be able to recover that in the future. In order to facilitate this process, we're going to use a new account called HST Recoverable. This is like an accounts receivable. It's money that we're gonna hopefully recover from the government in the future. So in this example, let's say that we, um, uh, Acme Computer Company, buy computer parts from XYZ Tech Company for $10,000 cash plus 13% HST. So in this case, we have our um, expense or inventory costs of $10,000 plus $1,300 in um, taxes. So for us, the entry would then be, um, we are going to debit our computer parts account because we have $10,000 more in, our, uh, in that account. We are going to debit our HST recoverable account for the $1,300 in taxes that we paid. And then we are going to credit our bank account because that's how we paid for the full amount. So that's the full value of the transaction. Then the two debits represent the two smaller parts. So, as we said before, um, periodically at the end of each quarter, the business has to settle their HST accounts with the government. Since we have two accounts, we have the recoverable and the payable, we have to figure out who owes who what. So we have to look at the payable and recoverable accounts to see if the government owes us money or if we owe the government money. So in this case, so the two scenarios are if the payable account is greater than the recoverable account, so we owe more than we're going to recover than we owe the government. If the flip side is true, so recoverable is greater than what we owe, then the government is always going to pay us or will pay us in that scenario. So keep in mind, a payable account has a normal credit balance. The recoverable account has a normal debit balance, right? So if the business owes the government this is the, what the transaction is going to look like. We're going to debit the full balance from the HST payable account and credit the full balance of the HST recoverable account. Those two lines will always, always occur. The difference is what we do with the bank account. If we owe money, we need to take that out of the bank account in the form of a check. So we're going to credit the bank account for the difference between the two, write a check for that amount, and then send or remit that to the government. On the other hand, if the government owes us, we're still going to go ahead and debit our HST payable account and credit the recoverable account. But in this case, because we have money coming to us, we're going to debit the bank account and submit our claim to the government, which is kind of like an invoice so that we can get our money from them. So please make sure that you check um, page 204 in your text um, for a kind of overview of the transactions. Notice that there are patterns. When we are um, uh, when we are in a sales position, we are always going to credit HST payable, and we will always have one debit and two credits. One of them being obviously to HST payable. So if you are doing a sale transaction and you have two debits and one credit, you should know right away you're on the wrong track. On the flip side, when you have purchases, you are always, always, always going to debit HST recoverable, and you're going to have um, in your journal entry two debits and one credit.